Well, I just want to, first off, I try to start off with the gospel. And it's very important that the gospel is clear. I just want to read one verse. And we're going to talk about it some more. But uh, in, uh, if you want to turn to Romans 4, verses 24 and 25. Um, Freely, God gives you His grace. And He gives you also imputed righteousness. What that is, is His righteousness put to your account. He considers you righteous. And all you have to do is take the gift by faith. All you do is faith. There is no works involved. You can't work your way to heaven. Because you know what? You have to be like God. And there's no, no one like God. He knew that, so he sent his son to die in your place and for you. And so the verse that I'd like to read is um, Romans 4, 24 and 25. But um, this imputed righteous I guess I should read 23. Now it was not written for his, that's Abraham's sake alone, that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if, if is, it's qualified, everybody doesn't get it, if, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. That's a good, that's a good set of verses. Um, new to the timeline? Anybody? Everybody? Okay, the timeline here is basically the way I, um, I describe it. It's really how the Bible's laid out. That's what I see the timeline as. I have a little timeline. You're, it's free. You can take one that my husband and I drew up. But this is, there's a lot here. If you're new to it, to me, it was overwhelming. Um, but basically, the Bible's laid out. Genesis all the way through Revelation. And so the Bible's laid out in a very precise way. God had to make it easy for us. And he did. And so he made it so simple. He set it up. for. He dealt with the nation Israel. I'm not going to go through all the specifics. I'm skipping a whole ton. I realize that. But I just want you to understand. Genesis, uh, about Genesis 12, all the way until Acts 9. The focus, what is it? Israel. Israel. The nation Israel, the Jews, it's a Jewish program. If you pull verses out without realizing context, and many churches do, you're going to have some problems and it's going to be like a puzzle that has been forced together. And you know what? The church today, they have this puzzle piece forced together and it looks right to them. It doesn't fit, but they've seen it so long, that's what it looks like. And it's not. And so, those particular books were written to the nation Israel. God was dealing differently with the nation Israel. He had a whole different program for them. And then, right, right about, uh, let's see, Acts, where is it? I can't tell. This is, this is a new one. Acts 9 is when God raised up the Apostle Paul and he started something new with Paul. And he wrote how many epistles? 13. 13 epistles. Romans through Philemon. That's to us today. The whole Bible's for us, and I'm really adamant about that. Um, I've heard recently some grace people saying, well, I don't ever go out outside of Paul's epistles because, you know, um, you know, Paul's our apostle. It's like, oh my gosh, you're missing everything. Paul himself goes outside of the, his epistles. You know, he, re he references the Old Testament all the time. So, don't do that, but get some insight on the timeline. And then, once we're raptured out of here, God continues and finishes his program with the nation Israel after he set them aside to raise up the Apostle Paul. I know that's not the best um, presentation. If, but, if you would like one-on-one, -on -one, I will spend whatever time's necessary. Come talk to me. If you're new to salvation and you don't understand how to get saved, come talk to me. And, or talk to probably most anybody here. Don't leave here if you don't know the Lord. If you don't know for sure you're going to heaven because you could walk out of here and have a car accident. So we don't want that.
right. I, I would like to um, really have somebody, if they would, go, you know, if you could go to, now we're going to a handout, um, to, <laughs> to page four. And it is, I believe, it's, wait a minute, is it, oh no, it's, pa it's page one, I'm sorry. Page one, um, and it's really just the agenda. If someone wants to read that very top verse, Romans 5, uh, 20 to 21, someone want to volunteer? Okay. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, and that, you know, that's our theme verse. And I picked that for so many reasons. But there's some very important things. You know, that one word, and we're going to talk about it later, the word might. Grace might reign. It might. Think on that. I'm not going to go into it anymore, but just think on it. Um, grace reigning is very important to think about. What does reigning make you think about? I'm sorry, royalty. Anything else? Rulership. Rulership. That's right. How, a kingdom? It's two kingdoms. You know, it's since, since um, Genesis. It's two kingdoms. Satan's kingdom, God's kingdom. This is the two things. This is what the battle is. God's, God's wisdom versus um, Satan's wisdom. And in Romans 5, we're not going to be studying that, but we're just doing an introduction today. In, in Romans uh, 5 there, he talks about grace reigning. This is in contrast to sin reigning. Guess who's in charge when sin's reigning? Satan. Satan. Yeah, and you know what? It catches us in our flesh, and it catches catches us in the world, world's perspective. A worldly perspective versus a spiritual perspective. These are two contrasting systems that you want to think about. And Paul addresses these all the time, but the whole Bible addresses these if you look for it. And um, in the last few years, I've been looking for it, and it's throughout. Um, it's very important to understand, and these things are important to understand as it relates to grace and how you are functioning. Who's in charge in your life? Who is really in charge? What's the most important thing to you when you wake up in the morning and through your day? And who's in charge? I'm just saying, think on it. We're going to be talking about it. Um, Okay, another verse I'd like to go to, if we go to 2 Corinthians 3.18, if I could have someone read this verse. Okay, sure. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, thank you. This, this verse is important. This verse is key, and I, I, this is really what I want to do today and tomorrow, is really help you to see more clearly than you have before to move forward seeing with open face beholding in the glass the glory of the Lord. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says and we will be changed. The more we see that, we're changed into the same image from glory to glory. Uh, did you have a question? No. Okay. Um, this is very important, and this, uh, what I think is the, well, it doesn't matter what I think, what the, what the Bible is saying here is we're to be changed from glory to glory. And this issue of glory is in Romans 8, and we're going to be talking about that, this glory. What is glory? Be thinking about what glory is. Um, I'm wondering, as we, we go forward here, I'm wondering, how much life do we have left to serve the Lord? I want us to think about that too as we get started. Are we too old? Most of us are over 30? Yeah. Yes? Okay, shoot. Um, 
Okay. Um, when we get to this time in life, we might think, okay, we are on the road home. And it is, this is to me the best time of my life. I love this time. I hope this isn't my phone. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Unbelievable, I didn't. Uh, turn your phones off, would you please? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unbelievable, I'm sorry. I'll turn it off. George, this is what you cut out. <laughs> Okay, um, wow, I don't even know where I was going. Okay, yeah. How much, how much time do we have left um, to serve the Lord? And does it matter how much time we have? Anybody? Anybody want to talk about it? Yes and no. That's a yes, no question. We have time if we have time because our weeks could be caught away today or we could be here tomorrow. That's right. Make use of the time you have. Whatever is the time. Okay, here's here's supposed to be a cup. And let's just say this is this is your time and energy for your life. And let's just say I might be overstating it, but let's just say you might only have this much left. You know, bear with me. Is it enough time? Should you just be coasting? No. I don't think so. And I know a lot of Christians, they're coasting, they're waiting for the rapture. They're just waiting. They can't wait for it. Oh, I can't wait for it either. But God would not have us to coast. And I know a lot of mainstream Christianity, they think getting saved is it. That is the goal. Is that the goal? No. What's the goal? Service. Service. Yes, and we're going to talk all about what is the goal. There's lots of goals. And we need to be clear on the goal because it is not just getting saved. That got us back to where Adam and Eve were. A little bit, actually a better place than Adam and Eve. But it got us to the point where God could use us again. And He wants to use us. He's got plans for us. And we're going to talk about that. So this right here is a whole bunch of liquid gold. Even if you have a drop. Don't drop, don't waste a drop of it. Think about it. If I can get up here and I can do, do this, um, this um, weekend, anybody can do it. Because uh, I was talking to Sherry and I was saying how when I was young, I was so shy, I couldn't talk to my best friend on the phone. I had to, my mind go blank, and I would have to have a sheet of paper. As soon as the phone rang, it's like, oh my gosh, write some topics, because, because as soon as she's done talking, I better ask her a question. And I, because I, I didn't know what to say, I would go blank. And I was, I was just so shy all my life until I got saved. And once I got saved, God loves me. Oh my gosh, He loves me. I don't have to people please anymore. Well, I did, but I knew I didn't have to. <laughs> I didn't have to. I started working on that and yielding to God. And here I am. How could this be? It's the power of God. And you know what? He changed my life. He's still changing. And you know what? He's getting me out of my comfort zone. When Sue said, teach this retreat. I thought I went off the road because I was texting while I was driving. <laughs> I just glanced. And anyway, I went right off the road. It's like, because I, on purpose, because I thought, let me read this again. What is she talking about? And, and so I, it took me a couple days. And then I thought, okay, yeah, God can take me out of my comfort zone and I can do this because you know what? That's why I'm left here. There's no reason. Otherwise, take me today. Take me now because if I'm not doing something for the Lord, there's no point for me to be here. 
and I want to inspire you if you you know and some of us you get in ruts or you get you know a little bit complacent or you're not sure what to do if we can stir one enough another up here that's my goal that's one of my goals is just to stir you up and say you know what if I can do this you can be here next week <laughs> so it, it's possible if I could do it um, but this might not be your ministry it might be something else something just do something think about it or add something or encourage someone else to do it um, so that's one of the things that I want to do um, and let's see the other thing I just wanted to say is don't wait till you feel like it you will not feel like it your flesh you know what are we are we feeling more energetic are we feeling better? Is everything working even better and better every every month? No. We're not going to feel good. And so that's why that's when you need to do it anyway. And that will actually help you and make you feel better. So it really God works it all to our, his glory. And so I just guess I wanted to start off with that. Any questions? No? Okay. Um, that was just the opening. Wow. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's see. I would like for us to think about Romans 10.17. Does anybody off the top of their head, without going there, know what Romans 10.17 is? It's my favorite verse. It's, so then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I knew you knew it. You know, it was only... A few months ago that I understood that verse and that was my favorite verse I didn't really understand it that faith cometh by hearing I understood that part that you need to it needs to be by God's Word and I kind of realized that if you were deaf you could still read it and it would be still effectual but it's re it and when it said he's repeating himself why is he repeating himself Faith cometh by hearing and hearing. It's like really hearing it. Not just hear, hear. It needs to go it needs to go from your head to your heart. If it doesn't, it's a bunch of head knowledge. And you know what? It's nothing. It's nothing. I don't even know if it's it may even burn away. I don't even know. It's nothing because when it's here, it's life itself. That's life. But if it's just a lot, if you can spit out rightly dividing, that's good. But that's not the goal. And I've, I've met a lot of grace believers that can spit it out. They've been in it their whole life. I've, I, I life coached a young lady and she was still saying, Lord, are you there? And I've, 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 uh, she, she had um, trusted Christ five times. Am I saved? Am I really saved? And it's like, wow, okay, this is number one we're talking about. And people have it here. She, she, was, she was able to spit it out better, as, at least as good as you are. And she didn't understand it here. And so, whoops. Um, so I'm just saying there's much more to this whole project than, than just knowing what to say and understanding the chart. It's important. Rightly dividing is important, but it's not everything. And actually, we're going to talk about it. It's not the only key that there is in the Bible. It's exalted as the key, and I know it's important. It is important. It's everything. It opened the Bible up to me, but there's more than one key to the Bible, and I want us to just open our hearts to it. I just ask you to be open, is all. Um, okay. Let's go to, um, I believe it's page three, and it should be the goals for the retreat. <laughs> And there's a lot of things there to talk about. I have a hard time keeping words to a minimum. Um, you'll, so there, there's a lot of talking today. And uh, we're going to be doing some, some discussing. But I just want to go over some of my goals. I've got lots of goals. And I really want this to be much, so much more than just... Um, me preaching or teaching but rather um, 
moving forward and cha being challenged and you challenging other people here. And it's really 1 Timothy 2.4, uh, realizing that all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God has two-fold purpose for us, to be saved, but also to be come to the knowledge of the truth. And this is my ministry. You've got two aspects of your ministry. And right today, the majority here is to help us come to the knowledge of the truth. Truth. And not just know it here, but evaluate how's my life? How's my heart? Am I living it? And what five years ago, what I realized is I needed to start all over again. And I've been saved for, for 30 years. I went back to Romans 1. My friend Cindy and I. It's like we did some studying, and all of a sudden it's like, where are we? Where are we in our edification? process. It, Paul from Romans through Philemon. Where are we? And she says, I don't know where I am. And I said, I don't know either. We better start at the beginning. And so we did to make it our own. Oh, you guys, I know you've probably sat with a lot of different preachers and they've said a lot of things and taught you a lot of good things. I, I know some of the preachers and they are good. But it's not making it your own. Go back and read it and study it slowly. Go verse by verse. Think on it. What do I believe? What do I understand? Why do I believe it? Wait a minute. That's not what this says. I always believe this. And I'm telling you, I've been righted quite a bit in some different things. But you know what? It is mine. And nobody's going to take that away from me. Nobody will shake me. It's not going to be any particular preacher. When, I st when we stand before the Lord, I guess I am preaching. Wow. Um, <laughs> when we stand before the Lord, our husbands are not going to be there. Your pastor's not going to be there. And uh, none of the other main teachers in in um, Grace School of the Bible or, oh boy, I'm a Brian Searchlight, that group, they're not going to be with you. You are standing alone, you and the Lord. It doesn't, you know, you're, it's no, no difference between male or female. We are really, it's us and God. And so if we could think this way as we study and realize, yeah, you're sitting in a church, you're very blessed to be in a church and Bible studies, wow. But then go home. The biggest important thing is your time alone with the Lord. That's where you're, it's you and God and the Spirit is talking to you. <laughs> and so He's talking to you individually. Where are you and what do you need at that moment? The Spirit knows. That's what He's doing. Um, so, the first, number one, to open your eyes a little wider than they are. That's my goal. Much more than just to teach a few things and clarify passages. Well, that is not really the main thrust here. It's to stir up and, and inspire. And you know what? To give you some power, empower you. Number two, to promote interactive Bible study. I'm not really um, for standing up here. I know I've done it today a little bit already, quite a bit, but I'm not for just preaching. A, a few years ago, where is Sue? A few years ago I said, Sue, I don't feel so comfortable teaching anymore. And she goes, what are you talking about? And I said, I, I don't know what's wrong. Something's, something's not right. I, I love teaching, but I just don't think it's right. It needs to be interactive. It needs to be back and forth. We need to discuss it. You come studied, I come studied, and then power. It's just power. And so there was that. I, I feel more strongly than ever as time goes on. But more important than teaching is really the interactive. And let's, um, let's just think about Proverbs 2, 1 through 5. We're not going to go there yet because we're going to go later. But there is a seeking and searching that needs to happen uh, when you come to the Bible. Where it says so that you can find the knowledge of God. Find the, the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. That's what Proverbs 1 through 5. It's, it's a process really and we're going to talk about that. And really understanding that it's not just sitting in a, in a, a Bible study listening. It's not coming to a church service. It is 
taking notes or thinking about the verses and going back home and studying them out yourself and then coming back with questions. So <clears throat> really it's a tool. That's a tool. Uh, number three, broaden faith by being in the scripture, uh, encouraging you to do that, that it's not just a dead book. I know a lot of people, a lot of grace people, a lot of people that are just mainstream Christianity, they really don't believe the Bible's effectual. They really don't believe that it um, has power. They don't go to the Bible first thing if they have a problem. They don't have, go to prayer first thing when they have a problem. And so really looking at the Bible a little differently. That's what I'm hoping that we'll do today. Um, and the reason why I say that people don't really believe it is because most of the week it's on the shelf until church the next week. And so I'd like to, to help you change that up if that happens. It should be really like right next to you. And it's like, where's where that verse again? Wait a minute. When, when you're cranky with your husband, it's like, okay, shh, I need to go to that Bible. You know, where's that verse again? And you know what? It starts being powerful. Um, it's not a genie in a bottle, though. And it's not going to, you can't just open it up and find your answer. It takes some studying. It's a lifelong book. Okay. Um... One of the things that I wanted to do is I think I'm going to skip down to number five and talk about uh, the last couple of years I've realized that there's so much more to the Bible than, than what's on the surface. What we do is we read. I don't know about you, but I just read what's, what's on the page. I keep reading, I study, I study it out. But I'm starting to realize God put underlying things in there. A whole ton of underlying things in there. And when I'm done studying the book of Romans, I look back and I think, oh my gosh, I listed some. I just took five minutes and I listed some things that I realized, oh my gosh, God just taught this to me this, this past year. He taught all these things in a new level, some new, new ones. For example, in number five, you, you start to learn God's perspective, His wisdom, His mind. You start learning how to access God's power. You start understanding that you've got a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Heavenly Father. Now, it didn't say, this is how you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Father. He's been teaching it. He's teaching it to you. It's underlying. If you don't spend the time in the Bible, and I know I'm pounding this, but that's what I do. That's my, my thing, is getting people to realize the Bible is way up here. Way up here. And it's more important than anything in your life. Anything. You broke your arm? Okay, get it set. But let's get back to the Word. <laughs> you know, something like this. I mean, there's stuff that you have to do. Get it done, but let's get back to things. Um, the other thing is learning how to walk by faith. Understanding selfless love. Understanding your identity in Christ. Understanding that there's a sowing and reaping to what you do, good and bad. There's, I mean, there's a ton. I can't read them all because, wow, I have a half hour. Um, so there's a lot here that we need to go over. But um, I just wanted to end this worksheet with number six. And that is... Um, I'm making a lot of noise, George. <laughs> okay, um, number six is really, we're on a continuum. We're going to talk more about this continuum, but uh, once you get saved, you're a babe in Christ. Everybody knows that. And you know at some point in your life, you move on to adulthood spiritually speaking it parallels you know developmental our developmental physical development 
And as a, as a believer, we all know a babe in Christ. We can stay a babe, Corinthians tells us, a carnal babe, our whole life if we want. Um, but we don't have to. We can move on. And Paul, Paul's epistles are set up in a precise way to move you to spiritual adulthood. And so somewhere, you're somewhere on that continuum in many areas of your life. We all are. I've not arrived. I don't know about you, but I haven't. And so we can encourage one another to move forward, and we're going to talk more about that. It's a growth cur uh, cur uh, continuum. And so um, think about where you are in your growth in certain areas of your life. Um, okay. <laughs>